Hello, welcome to my bookshelf and today I'll be doing my wrap up for the month of October which means I will go through and discuss all the books that I read this month and admittedly I had a very ambitious TBR this month if I did my math correctly I had about like 10 books on my TBR and I only finished four of them which is less than half but still four books in a month that's one book a week you know that's that's not bad like that's pretty good so moving right along let's talk a little bit about the books that I read this month so I like to start off by kind of giving like an overview of all the books like some statistics if you will so two of the books I read were written by male authors and two were written by female authors um, I don't really think this has any bearing on anything, but maybe something to look at in the future, but I just like to point that out. Um, three of the authors are not from America, which is very surprising. Normally it's like the other way around. Um, so I only had one book written by an American author, though admittedly all the authors that aren't from America are from Europe, either the UK or Sweden. <laughs> so you know there are some differences as far as like culture goes that I noticed in the books but not huge differences like minor ones like you could overlook it um so maybe not the most diverse but I'm getting there all right all these books were published in the 2000s one being in the early 2000s and the rest being published in the 2010s or whatever you call that decade that we're currently in Three of the books would be considered thrillers of some kind, and the last one I guess would be considered a contemporary book? I'm not really sure how to classify it. And in total, I read 1,301 pages, which I think is pretty good. That averages out to about 300 pages a book, which again, you know, decent sized book. So again, I'm going to pat myself on the back. I'm going to say that was a good reading month. Maybe not what I wanted in my ideal world, but... I, I still read, you know, four books, so that's something to be proud of. I mean, I must say that, like, you know, I did have six books on my Spookathon TBR and I only read four, like, the entirety of the month, so clearly I kind of failed on these DBRs, but that's okay. Alright, so let's just jump into the books themselves. The first one being the book that had the most intriguing commentary on real life issues, and that would be Room by Emma Donahue, and... I realize I always say room weird, I don't know why, but I just do. Moving right along, this book um, is told by our main character, Jack, who is five years old. He's always lived in the titular room, and that's just all he knows. So we have a really interesting perspective on his world, and just like the world in general, because he, he doesn't fully understand things because, you know, he's five years old and you know so he's limited in that sense but he's also limited just because like his experiences are limited to you know this room like that's all he's ever known um, I should mention that he's not there alone thankfully um, his mother is there with him um, and this is kind of told early on but the mom has not always been in this room so we get like some mention of the outside world through his mother through the story so he knows that there is an outside world but he doesn't really understand fully what that means because he's never experienced it. So to him, it's almost like this magical world. But like I said, I would say it's not only the most intriguing, but like the most surprising that this book had a lot of really interesting um, comments, I think, to make on uh, our society as a whole and what um, the world is like. Which I wasn't expecting from this book. I was expecting a thriller, and this would be a book that I mean, I don't know what else you would market it as, but it doesn't really fit the thriller genre to me personally. Um, that could just be me, but I, there, I mean, there's definitely elements of thriller in here. Like, there's no denying that, um, especially the first half of this book. But I think that the book has so much more going on for it than just, like, the thrilling aspects of it. And honestly, I don't think the thrilling aspects last all that long. I think it really is just more about these real people and these real situations. So yeah, it was a really good book, but it just wasn't what I was expecting. But it's, it was really good, and it's kind of like one of these books that I want to keep in my collection. I really enjoyed it. Moving right along, the next book was clearly the most violent book, probably that I've ever read, to be honest. But that's not really saying a whole lot, because I really don't read violent books. That's just not my thing. Not most of the time. But... 
This one has a really interesting premise, so that kind of pulled me in, and admittedly, it made the violence, like, worth it for me. Um, so, the premise of this story is a little hard to explain. I will try my best. So, basically, um, I'm assuming that it takes place in the UK somewhere, because that's where our author is from. But either way, um, I'm not sure, again, even if this is, like, worldwide, but either way, in this uh, place, there's been an outbreak of these... Um, incidents, <laughs> something almost like switches off in them and they become very violent and they will literally kill you. Um, and they can be your best friends, you can be, you know, just having a nice, you know, picnic. I would, I would just having a picnic on a wonderful, beautiful day. And all of a sudden, you know, like even mid-sentence, they have this a couple of times where the person starts talking and then all of a sudden something just like comes over them and they literally do anything that they can to to kill the other person, to get rid of them. Um, and so yeah, there's, and this is like described in detail in here all over. So yeah, very violent, uh, very explicit in that sense. So, you know, if you're squeamish about those things, not not the book for you. It just isn't. Um, but I would say it has an interesting premise. It's one of those books that feels like a movie when you're reading it. Like, I could see this, like, just be being turned into a movie. Um, which, like, according to my copy of the book, it was supposedly, like, about to become one, but I don't think that ever happened. Um, fun fact, this is the first book in a trilogy, which is interesting. I didn't know that going in. Um, but it was pretty evident about halfway through that, like, oh, there's more to the story, isn't there? We're going to be left on kind of like, huh, what's going to happen next? Um, and it did. So this was an interesting start to this trilogy. I'm not at all sure where they're going to go with this. There's a lot of really interesting directions. Um, but, yeah, I'm not really sure what to expect, but, yeah, this book was very violent. It was very fitting for Halloween. But, yeah, so if you want to read about people just randomly killing other people, this is the book for you. Um, but, I mean, I believe there's a lot more to this book than just that. It really is talking a lot about the panic that, um, this event, uh, creates because it just, it happens, like, slowly at first and then it just, like, exponentially gets, like, more and more people are just turning. Um, so it really just becomes, like, this end-of-the-world feeling experience and, and that really comes across through this book. Um, so it's a really interesting exploration of, like, what would happen if this were to happen. Alright, the next book was the most unexpected read, and that is A Stranger in the House by Sherry Lapina. I say unexpected because I didn't have this on my original TBRs anywhere. Um, I wasn't expecting to read this. I wasn't expecting to own this book at the beginning of the month, but here I am. Um, I'm sure you know at this point, but I won this book on giveaway for this book, which I'm just still in shock about, but... I did, and I read it for Spookathon, and it was really enjoyable. Um, you know, kind of a preview for my review on this book. I I did enjoy it, you know, the first time through, for sure. But the more I've, that I've had time to really think about this, and like, you know, I think watching that Spookathon live show about this book, um, it really helped make me see, like, oh, like, maybe this book doesn't necessarily hold up to scrutiny. <laughs> Um, because it really didn't take long for them to kind of poke some holes in it. Not that it was, like, really obvious or, like, gaping flaws, but it wasn't, like, a perfectly told story. Um, and honestly, I think it just falls into a lot of the problems that, like, just thrillers in general have, because a lot of what makes thr thrillers really good is kind of, like, this tension and this mystery that's building, 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 because you don't really know what's happening fully until the end of the book. And so obviously once you know what happens, it kind of loses the appeal, you know, on a second read. It's just kind of how it is. So I, I have a feeling that this is a book that, you know, on a second read wouldn't be as good. But it was definitely a good, you know, enjoyable thriller. If you like thrillers, then yeah, I would say this this was a good one. There was nothing wrong with it. Um, overall, like huge gaping flaws, like I said, but um, yeah, it might not be the best thriller in the world, but it was enjoyable. Alright, and the last book that I read in the month of October was the most amusing, quirky read, and that was Brit Marie Was Here by Frederick Bachman. And I must say, I really enjoyed this book. It was just really cute and fun, um, and I was just not expecting that either from this book. I honestly don't know what I was expecting because I've never read Frederick Bachman, 
had no idea what to expect. And honestly, I don't know if all of his books are like this or if this is just like a unique entry. Um, I'm not really sure, but I honestly know that I'm going to pick up more of his books because I really enjoyed this one. As far as describing like what happens in this book, I'm not really sure how to do that because honestly there isn't necessarily a lot that happens. It really is more just like this journey that this character goes on, you know, of like personal discovery and things like that. She is forced to find a job after not having um, a paying job for so many years. So now she just kind of is being thrown into this whole new world for her and she kind of has to figure out, you know, who she is now. Um, because her life is just drastically changed rather suddenly and she's kind of just trying to figure out what that means and who she is and things like that. And also like our main character, Britt Marie, she's not like your typical protagonist or even just your typical character. She comes off as being very standoffish, um, but it's interesting because the story is told from her point of view. So like a lot of what she says seems almost kind of obnoxious at parts, but like you get her thoughts behind this, so you realize that like she doesn't necessarily mean it the way that it comes out or the way that it sounds. So there's a lot more depth to her that like initially when meeting her, like you would not get probably. Um, but I think that like she really grows on you over time. She's a really interesting character, and you know. At first you're like, I don't know how I feel about her, she's really like weird. And then you're like, I kind of, I have a soft spot for her, you know. I, I really enjoyed her a lot. Um, so I would say it was just a really enjoyable read and it was really funny and amusing at times too. So it was a great way to end October for me, even though it's not spooky at all. It was just a fun book and I think I needed that after some of my darker books, especially Hater, that was horrifying. Yeah, so this book definitely helped with, you know, not being so scared at night, which I think we could all use during these scary times. All right, so those were the books that I read in the month of October. Like I mentioned, I only read four. I had a lot more books that I wanted to read this month, but I didn't get to, which I should mention here that um, I recently filmed my November TBR, so I will tell you, I don't mention the other books that I didn't get to finish, um, from October, like the books I had on my TBR but didn't get to. I don't mention them in my November TBR, but just know that I'm going to still try to read them. Like, I'm not giving up on them, but I'm obviously going to try to make my November TBR a priority. Um, so we'll see what happens. There could be a lot of books left on the drawing board at the end of November, who knows? But either way, I'm going to try to read as much as I can in November. We'll see. I always think that. It usually doesn't happen. We'll find out. So with that, I just want to, as always, thank you guys so much for watching this video, and until next time.